So that's our thanksgiving. There's one common factor, and that's Christ. We don't deserve to be saved, but because of His love and graciousness upon us, that He gave us salvation through Him. A simple plan. And each of one of or here who received Christ has that common factor. And that's the reason we could go together and we should decide fellowshipping with one another. That's Thanksgiving. Desiring to fellowship, desiring to be with Christians, to be with servants of God or with believers of God. As Paul said in Ephesians, but now in Christ we were sometimes we're a far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We're near, compacted together because of the blood of Christ. And that's the emotion, the same emotion of the people of Israel. They got themselves together. Yes, they're still slaves. Yes, they still don't have a kingdom. But they proclaim to their neighbors or to the other kingdoms that we have something common. We have God in our lives. That in spite of all our experiences in lives, we will prevail through the grace of God. So they gathered together as one man. And their desires not only to gather together, says there, they spake unto Esther the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. We can see here, their desires not only to be together as people of God, their desire also is to recognize the Word of God. Okay? God's Word. Now, Ezra, the priest, in verse 2, brought the law before the congregation. What a perfect person to bring the Word of God. One who knows the Word of God. One who knows the law, the commandment. He's a scribe, a scholar. Okay? He brought the law before the congregation. He was the third leader of the Israelites who tried to rebuild Israel. But he was not successful at all. He was able to start it, but he was not that successful. Now he continued to serve God, and now the people asked him to bring the law or bring the word, the Torah, and read it. Okay? And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Now, this day, that this day in the, the period of Israel, it was a very significant occasion because it's a day or what we call the fist of the trumpets, where they signal, they blow the trumpet. It's the start of festivities. That God is a wonderful God. God has blessed Israel. It's it's one of the festivities that was uh, instructed during the in the book of Leviticus. Okay? And here they would like to celebrate that. For more than a hundred years, they never had a chance to pray together, never had a chance to read the law of God, never had a chance to fellowship with one another. Why? Because they were slaves. They were desolate. And now they stood at the vacation. They gathered together, they saw God's word. A lot of years. They waited the desire to hear God's word. We have the same desire with the people of Israel. Do we thank God for listening to His word? Do we thank God that we could be with our brethren? Or we just do Sunday service as a routinary activity every week? What's our desire? What's our desire? Now look at the desires of the people. In verse 3, And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. The scribes read the Torah, the law, from the of the morning until midday. So let's say three, four hours listening to the word of God. Wow. Most of us, we look at our time. Pastor is speaking like 40 more, 40 minutes. I hope it stops at after 5 minutes. Or the preacher is taking a time, like an hour. Is that a desire for a person to thank God for His goodness? I remember back in the Bible College where my wife and I went to. Uh, 
I have a roommate, and he served. He, he was assigned to a church. They call it the Seven Mountains, or the Seven Churches in the Mountain, where there's no vehicle that could take them. They have to walk four to five hours walking from Saturday and they reach Saturday evening, and Sunday they'll have to preach two or three churches. And they start at eight in the morning for one church and end at like the ten. And then they walk again and they go to another church like 11.30 and end like 2 o'clock. Because they have like a worship service and a prayer meeting. Back to back. Okay? So they have two churches. One day, my roommate was so tired. We have exams, we have a lot of activities in the Martin College. So during Sunday, well Saturday was like really well, during Sunday, he preached in the first service in a one in the first church he went to. He went to another church. He was so tired, exhausted, okay, physically exhausted. The spirit still there, but he's exhausted. He preached. The service was, was should be like at two o'clock, but he stopped at eleven thirty. He stopped like twelve thirty something. He preached like twenty minutes or thirty minutes. He was about to go down the platform. An old lady approached him and said, Pastor, I walked four hours just to reach this church to worship God and to listen to his prayer. Please go up and preach some more. <laughs> so he can do anything. He went up and preached and they stopped the service and said, Wow, what an attitude. Desiring the word of God. It's something we should thank for the word of God. We have the Bible. We are free to read and bear the Bible, possess the Bible. A lot of people in this world, a lot of people in this world, they are not allowed even to read and possess the Bible. We have it. It's a shame we don't even have a Bible in our homes. It's a shame we don't even have our personal Bible. And we claim that we love God. We were seeing wonderful words of life. How wonderful is that word that we don't read it at all, that we don't recognize it. Thanksgiving is thanking God for what we have. The grace that He gave us. Being saved and being with God's family and having His word in us, communicating with us. Wow! From morning to midday, they were listening to him, reading the Bible, and they were they were trying to understand. Look at verse three, and he reading before the street that was before the water gate from morning until midday before the men and women, and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. They were trying, they tried to understand. Okay? Now, the Esther read all, all day. Look at verse 4. Ezra, and then you can see different names. 14 of them. From his left hand and his right hand. Seven and seven. They were take turns in reading the Bible. Okay? They have the joy to be part of the ministry. They thank God to be part of the ministry. They thank God part of the service. They have their part in the work of God. Something that we could thank God for. We are part of this ministry. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2. What do you mean part of ministry? Do I need to be a pastor? Do I need to go to Bible college? Do I need to preach in the streets? What does it mean to be part of the ministry of God? Chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and all the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, read us carefully. In whom all building fitly framed together unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom 
ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. See what does picture us a believer, a corporate body of Christ. We fitly pray together, intertwined, interconnected. Each of one, each of us here are part of the ministry, the body of Christ. So we have part of the ministry of Christ. Not only Pastor Rose who needs to be serving God in Woodside. It's a church. We, the church of God. We serve, we should serve God. Living our lives for God. Serving God in our different works, in school, in the community, in the organizations we are in. We should present the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. We are a symbol of thanksgiving, a life of thanksgiving, a symbol of life in the world of darkness. Our lives are pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it should be that scenario. That's our service. And we share the gospel as our service. A little smile. A Christian is a joy to every place of work, every school, every house, every community. We bear the light. And let's show the light. Okay? Let's show this light. 